now let's go back to uh, I wanted to do just a little bit more on uh, JDBC. We already saw the basic stuff yesterday. We saw SQL injection. The last couple of things I want to wrap up on JDBC are the metadata features. So what is metadata? It's data about data. What are the relations? What are the attributes and so forth? So JDBC lets you access metadata through a fairly simple uh, interface. There are two kinds of metadata. One is when you have executed a query, I want metadata about the query result. Okay. What are the attributes in the query result and so forth. For that, when I execute a query, remember I get back a result set. So on that result set, let's say RS, I can say get metadata. And that returns an object of type result set metadata. Now on that object, I can execute various functions to get at actual data. For example, uh, since this is a result of a query, I want to know what are all the columns in the result and what are their types. First, I need to know how many columns there are. So this result set metadata object, if I say get column count on that, it returns a number of columns. And so I'm looping over those columns for i equal to 1 to that. And then I'm printing get column name i, rsmd dot get column name i, and rsmd dot get column type name of i. So that prints the column name and the type of it. So that's one. Why is it useful? For example, you have used, um, let's say, PG admin or Eclipse or NetBeans. Uh, it's possible to connect to a database, as you have done in PG admin, browse what are the relations there, uh, what are the indices, uh, what are the attributes of the relations. All that is enabled through the metadata interface. Uh, PG admin is probably written in C or uh, so, and maybe using ODBC, but uh, which has exactly the same set of features. If you write it in Java, it is using JDBC metadata features. The second kind of metadata, so this was for the result of a query. The second kind is for what all relations are there in the database, what are their attributes, and so forth. For this, when you have opened a database connection, you can execute connection dot get metadata. And the result is an object of type database metadata. So DBMD is this object. Now, on that, I can do various things. Now, the key thing to note here is, unlike for a single result set metadata, where there's some number of columns, here there are many relations. They, in turn, have attributes and so on. So the way uh, JDBC provides access to it is by a function called get columns. To, uh, uh, which basically um, gets you various uh, piece of it. So uh, if you go here, the first one null, I think, is the uh, catalog name, which is not used in uh, PostgreSQL, I think. The next is the database name, univ db, if, or whatever else you use when you created the database. The next one is the relation name, and the last one is the column name. Now, if you notice, for column name, I have said percent. That means get me all the columns of this relation. I could also say percent for relation name. It means gets all the relations in this. And then there are other functions for getting indices and other uh, uh, and integrity constraints. So I have not shown all the features here. But there are methods on database metadata to access all of those. And the basic way you do it here is you get many results. So what you get back is a result set. And that result set has a number of columns, including catalog name, relation name, column name, and so on. Yeah. So I'm looping this uh, while loop loops over the members of that result set. And rs.getString column name gets the name of the column. And then um, rs.getString type name gets the type of that column. Similarly, uh, table name and other such fields are available, the other columns. So you can see what all tables there are in the database. Any questions about this? The total columns. So it returns a set containing whatever you want. Uh, so suppose, in, suppose in, there are the four, uh, four columns or four attributes, then four attributes will be returned. Suppose yeah. I would like to want only two attributes. So can we get with the help of the metadata? Uh, so the 
Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I don't know if the percent, instead of percent, you can give a column prefix or something, maybe. Uh, but you can always go over the result set and uh, extract the columns that you want. So it gives you all the information. You can pick what you want from it. So, uh, uh, suppose we, uh, we are able to get the specified number of the columns, but I would like to suppose want to, uh, want the uh, specific columns. So how actually we can so get that? Here, for the columns, I said percent, which means get all the columns. Uh, if I want a specific column, I give a column name there instead of percent. And then what I will get is, uh, you know, there are extra things in that result set. Uh, here I am getting the type name. So if I give the column, what information do I want? Maybe the type, uh, I think there may be length and there are other fields in there. I don't remember the full list. Uh, but you can get a lot of information about the column if you want it for just one column. You, you can choose whether you want to get it for one table, all columns, all tables, and so forth. Yeah. Sir, in Oracle, uh, there is a describe and space table name to see the structure yeah. of the table. Uh, yeah. What is there in Postgres to see the structure of the table? Yeah, in PostgreSQL, there is, uh, I think, slash uh, D, right? But it is giving all table names, not structure of the table. That is, no, what no, all can, columns are there? So, so first of all, uh, PSQL has a bunch of slash commands, okay. which can let you get at the details. Okay. Uh, but uh, most of, I mean, today, uh, who uses the command line? Not much. Yeah. If you go to PG admin, it's all there. Yeah. And PG admin in turn is using these APIs to get at it. So that is the more important thing than the uh, PSQL. I didn't focus on PSQL because I don't really expect too many people will use it. Okay. You can use it, you're most welcome to learn more. Uh, it's, it is useful when I, uh, remote uh, SSH to a machine and I can't get X uh, running, uh, so I can't see the GUI, um, then I can do this. But it's usually uh, fine to open up PG admin on my machine and connect to the remote machine. So it's usually not an issue. But sometimes the remote machine may disable connection, remote connections for security, and then SSHing in and running uh, PSQL can be useful. Thank you. So when I was actually trying to create tables with constraints in PG admin, yeah. it was throwing out problems when I gave the uh, foreign key constraints. That was some typecasting problem. But the same thing when it was done in PSQL, it was getting uh, created. Why exactly is that? I think I'll have to see what the specific thing was. I'm not sure. Uh, so I have seen this happening when you use a third party tool. Like if you use NetBeans to uh, connect to Oracle and run commands, you no, can do that. No. But I have seen many cases where a uh, valid Oracle command will cause problems in NetBeans. Um, but PG admin is tied to PostgreSQL, so I'm not sure why this happened. So if you give the specific thing, uh, maybe we can look deeper into it. Sir, in uh, Oracle, normally if you do not give any name for the constraint, it will by default assign some system. Yes, line. all the databases so do that. Even in uh, PostgreSQL also yeah. it can happen. So yeah, how same. do we find those constraint names that have been given using the same metadata information? So uh, th there are other functions on get metadata uh, to go over the constraints. So I have not shown it here, but you can look it up offline. Of course, PG admin directly gives you that. But if you want to do it from a program and uh, get access to it, it is available. Okay. Uh, the, I think the last uh, significant thing which I want to mention is transaction control in JDBC. I mentioned this earlier when I said what is a transaction. Uh, and I told you that when you run an SQL command, most databases will immediately commit it. But if I want to, uh, let's say, uh, do a transaction which involves multiple steps in the database and have all of them succeed or none of them succeed. Why does it matter? What if there's a power failure in the middle? You could have an inconsistent state. So if I want all the things to be done or none to be done, then I have to use a transaction. And JDBC supports uh, API for transactions. By default, every single SQL statement is immediately committed. But what you can do is say connection, once you open the JDBC connection to a database, connection dot set auto commit to false. What does that do? After you do that, every SQL command which you issue is not committed at that point until you do a connection dot commit. If you 
don't want to commit, if something went wrong, you can do connection dot rollback. So, if you are building an application which does multiple updates, you need to use this wherever uh, there is a single transaction with multiple updates. So, there is other stuff on embedded SQL. Uh, in this chapter, there is stuff on procedural extensions to SQL. I am asking about the type of JDBC drivers that we have to the use. type of JDBC yeah. driver, yeah. So, generally we will not uh, prefer type 1. So, so, either we will go for thin drivers or uh, new drivers. Yeah. So, yesterday I tried for the same, but uh, the things are not working. If it is possible, just uh, uh, give some idea about the same. So, if you look at the older uh, stuff on JDBC, there is a lot of stuff about the type of the driver and so on. Uh, these are details which we do not really need to worry about anymore. Uh, so, for each database has a current recommended driver, more or less, and uh, that is that generally works without any issues. So, for Oracle, there is the JDBC thin driver. For PostgreSQL, there is, uh, so we have made those available. Other databases have their corresponding drivers. So, if you go to their websites, just find out which driver they recommend and use that. So, there is usually no issue as long as you get one which is compatible to the version of Java. Java itself has been evolving. And sometimes, generally, bytecode is compatible, but sometimes, uh, you know, they, API uh, version which you are using JDBC API, you have to get a driver for the corresponding API version or a newer one. So, as long as you get that, it should not cause any problem. Thank you, sir.